Happy New Year, or almost New Year, whenever you're watching this. It's around the New Year oh, time. You know I have been dying to it's do lit, this. Literally. It's lit, literally. It's lit! I'm Far, that's Pete, that's Jay, this is the oh. Mad Good Nick Show. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell button. Tell us what you think. We're here to talk about the New York Knicks New Year's resolutions. Each of us got a couple, a couple of key players on the Knicks. We're not gonna go through all of them. That's what we want you to do in the comment section. But we're gonna go through them, a couple of them, and uh, talk about what their New Year's resolution should possibly be. I'll, I'll start it off here, guys. All right. So my guy, my guy, my guy, um, Kevin Knox. Oh, or Knox. New York Knicks rookie Kevin Knox. Uh, key New Year's resolution for Kevin Knox. Um, one is that free throw percentage. He's he's gotta a get to the line more, and and, and better that free throw percentage. Judging by how he has turned it around uh, from uh, the first few games of his season to the latter ten, I have no doubt in my mind that he will absolutely be uh, at least eighty percent clip um, somewhere somewhere around there uh, by season's end. I think he has that kind of work ethic. I think he has that kind of drive and determination. And I think he's going to get to the free throw line a lot more frequently once he learns how to how to get that body contact when he goes to the basket. Right now, he kind of just does those like little, little floater things. <laughs> yeah. um, but as he gets more into it, I, th I think he's going to get to the line more. So that's going to be the key New Year's resolution. If I were to give a secondary one, I would say overall field goal field goal percentage. But that'll come that'll come with time, uh, no doubt. Thoughts on Knox's New Year's resolutions? I agree with you. Just continue to use your size advantage well, I think, over the rest of the players in the league. That's a good point. Size advantage is going to be going to be absolutely yeah. key. Uh, I totally agree. I think he will definitely improve. Uh, I don't know about eighty percent. That's because he's not like a pure shooter just yet. But if he's on a trajectory to continue improving, and like you guys said, free you guys mentioned free throws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think not only become a better free throw shooter, but take more free throws by attacking the basket. And I think he's got. He is being more aggressive as a player. So, yes, and I think in, in due time he'll get the respect from the referees, so it'll work. That's very it'll true. All work out. He's too so he's, so like, he's so big and lanky not to get that respect. Like hundred percent. But know? it's all he's not quite just refined yet as a player as far as like his body and his shot. So you know, once the referees see that improvement and see that he's kind of really being assertive, I think they'll he'll that'll pay dividends. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is in the NBA. I wish it wasn't. Who do we got next? We got Frank Nelikina. I don't know why they came out like a certain type of rock song or something. <laughs> Sound like the Hot Wheels commercial. <laughs> Hot Wheels, lead the way. If you got the Hot Wheels, we got the track. Hot Wheels, figure eight stars. Frank Nelikina. Hot Wheels, lead the way. If I have something for him to fix him in a year, it has to be that shot. Ah, I was gonna say. You guys know, he was already going for the motion. At, dude, it has to be that shot. We are looking at percentages of 34% field goal percentage. It's not gonna cut it, Frank. Nope. Uh, should we even talk about the three-point? Because it's even lower. I Hello. like to Can know you go? because I'm Hello. a sadist Can or a masochist. Uh, it's 29% three-point percentage. That's not now, good. an interesting, uh, I think, stat to look at as well is something that they call Effective field goal percentage, the difference between the two points and the three point uh, line. It's 39. It doesn't sound that terrible, but again, that three point shot totally. Is there is there game. more context to that? Because I'm, I'm not familiar with that stat. No? Okay. Hey, I guess it's a fairly new stat. Is it related to true gotcha. shooting? Is it like true shooting? Like, it, uh, exactly. So, depending what true you shoot, it takes into account free throws similarly. as well. But so it's, it's taking into right. account, obviously, knowing that a three point shot oh. is worth more, but you're okay. more effective at, let's say, shooting a mid range. So, it's knowing that you're taking this into account. And in case Jay's wrong, here's the Google answer for it. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> I know. Man. Facts, right? Facts. Um, Put some respect on it. It's a credibility. I, 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 I agree. <laughs> I, I agree with you, Jay. I think um, that's been. Key. I, I think as yeah. well. Something interesting to note. I know it does not fall on a sole player in terms of defense, but we are talking about a sport where one player really can impact the game. I mean, the Knicks right now they're letting teams average 115 points per game. Ugh. That's pretty damn rough. 
And um, so Frank's New Year's resolution should be what? I mean, to either you yourself find a way to step it up even further in terms of defending or find a way to inspire the rest of your teammates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Interesting. Pete. All right. We got to talk about Mitchell Trier. Uh, he's sidelined at Mitchell Trier. <laughs> Mitchell Trier! Holy shit. That's what I said. I'm talking about Mitchell Trier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, ah! hey, zoom in. Got... Middle East. Oh, 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 those are my notes. Uh, Let's bring him back. Listen, it says Mitchell and Trier. My lights Trier. are blinding, aren't they? Oh, it? <laughs> it's the two players that. Mitchell Robinson. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mitchell Robinson Fuck and Alonzo Trier, respectively. <laughs> Mitchell Robinson. You know, <laughs> that right. guy who's been hurt for so long, I don't know who he is anymore. It's only his ankles. Yeah. So for, for him, I think the obvious stuff is to bulk up a little, a little bit, uh, you know, work towards becoming that uh, NBA caliber physical specimen. Of course, that's obvious. Uh, but to me also, it's just work on your defensive uh, IQ. I think you get into foul trouble a lot. I think Mitchell, uh, we could definitely use him on the perimeter and blocking shots at the rim, but if he's if he's in early foul trouble all the time and he's getting benched. In his defense, he's been out a long freaking time. That's but true. I still agree but with what you're but saying. But when he's in, that's, it, it, that's taken him out of the game so many times. I just want to see him in the game and be, be a contributing you know, a contributing player. So obviously fixing that defensive IQ, working wherever drills are necessary to figure out how to defend on the post against these wily NBA veterans that have all the tricks. And that's gonna come in time, and I trust he's gonna do it. And also I think uh, at some point he could, you know, with Frank be the defensive centerpiece of the team. And so maybe uh, see him a little more vocal on the floor, maybe directing traffic since he's got the best view. Uh, so little things like that. Those are all little like, growth things that I think he's totally capable of doing. So I'm, yeah. I think those I like should it. be his. I like it. And what I'll, I'll, add, I'll add to that, I think Fizdale's done a good job at letting Mitchell play. Yes. Um, and and that's why he fouls out so much too. That's true. It's like you're you're gonna you got four fouls in the third, you're gonna continue to play. You got five fouls in the fourth, you're, we're not benching. You're gonna continue to play. Uh, good points there. So I'll I'll take the next one here. Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, yeah. I think overall, I mean. Timmy has had a, a pretty solid season, and, and dare I say, a solid enough season to be a decent trade bait. I don't want to see Tim leave the Knicks, because I do really like Tim Hardaway Jr., um, both as a, as a person, what he's been, his improvement on the court this year. If I were to give him one New Year's resolution this, this, uh, for, for 2019, at least through the second half of the season, it really has to be being the definitive go-to scorer um, and the facilitator more than that. Uh, Any time that, that Tim Hardaway Jr. has more than five assists, the team overall just moves so much better and is just much more fluid. Um, that's I, I want to see his assists go up. Um, coupled with that, he needs to be that go-to guy game in and game out. I think he's taken a little bit of a backseat since the injury. He's popped back up a couple times, but overall... If you're going to be the go-to guy and that's what you're being paid to do, you need to put your stamp on it. I think you can do a little bit of a better job with with that. Oh, man, I could not agree more with what you said. And it's something that you noticed in the game when THA was out for one game and you saw immediately the ball movement. And a lot of that is like because yeah, yeah. there's no natural next scorer on the floor. Everyone's new. So mm -hmm. it's sort of mm -hmm. like arbitrarily the ball moves around more. But you saw the result not because we were, we were much more competitive in that game. Even if our defense wasn't there, it helped propel our offense to become more competitive. So I think THJ would drastically improve the team if he moved the ball more. I think he would improve his consistency too, because a lot of times he gets into a rut, and I feel like because he Chalk has no shots, yeah, he has no kind of backup plan. Like, oh, let me be a yeah. playmaker for a second. It kind of makes that drudgery even worse. If, so, they, if, if teams started picking up on the fact that Tim Hardaway Jr. all of a sudden is averaging five, six assists a game, they won't press up on him and be under him be as different. soon as he touches the ball. You don't think so? I, I feel like I don't he's think, the only legitimate threat. But that's that, no, that's what I'm saying. Like if he, but if they learn that, oh my God, he's actually passing the ball now. I need to start paying attention to help defense when he gets the ball. I think that's where it will help his game vastly improve. Right now, he's averaging what two, three assists a game, maybe. Yeah. Can we get that? Can we get that check? We have too many like uh, ISO style players that slow down the ball movement, and you know it doesn't. It doesn't two point nine assists. Two point nine assists. There you go. So, um, all right, uh, Jay. They talk about Moody Way. No, was this Moody what you want? Like R and B? Like was Moody this way. rock still? I don't know what you're doing right <laughs> was now. Was this Hot Wheels still? What do we got? Uh, so oh, yeah. for uh, Moody, I gotta say it's pretty exciting that the guys actually 
doing career highs, field goal percentage, points. Also, he's pretty much on par with the least amount of turnovers in his career. I have to say That's this, amazing. I know. This is nothing but good news. However, his rookie season yes. was a season that he was averaging the most assists with 5.5. So that is your resolution. Try to find your old self. What's he averaging right now? The ball. He is averaging 3.6. I think right. you can step, step it up. I, I, yeah, I think 2019, that number's definitely going up. Um, good. Other guys got to hit their shots, too. Assist is like a two-way street. Take, I'll pass it to you, but you got to hit the yeah. shot. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, let's move on let's to last guy. my main man, Alonzo Trier. Not Mitchell Trier. I said before. Mitchell Trier? Alonzo Trier. Obviously, you've been uh, a sight for sore eyes for New York Knicks fans, so we could heap praise upon you for days. But as far as New Year's resolutions go, uh, one, I'd love to see more of your playmaking ability. At one point, Fizz put him at the one, and I think he did a pretty decent job. And I think, again, it's like the THJ situation. If you find your way to, if you find a way to involve yourself in the offense more, I think that's just all around you to do more for your shot, for your defense, and for all the other players. Make your teammates better. That's always been like the hallmark of a great player. If you can make his teammates player. And also his shot consistency. Obviously, he's an incredible threat on offense. But again, he does from time to time, you know, have rough quarters here and there. So just become a little more consistent, you know. And I think obviously we we ask a lot of these rookies. I mean, this is their first year. But, Keep shooting. You know, the caveat here is you guys are all doing great. These are just the things yeah. you want to work on. Like we all have things to work on. Yeah. I mean, my. <laughs> my, my you want to talk about it? Please? <laughs> <laughs> my. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree time. with that assessment. <laughs> um, I would just say, you know, don't let that money change it. I don't think it will at all. But it's. At the end of the day, I think he really will be uh, will be that solid contributor for the Knicks that, that we've we've already seen in the first half of the season. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. If you have any ideas for New Year's resolutions for the New York Knicks, please drop it below. Happy New Year, everyone! Hope it's you lit. enjoyed the holidays. It's lit. Or Thank things Pete can work on. <laughs> or, thing, or things Pete can work on. <laughs> it's lit. Let me know. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to another segment of MGKS. Now, for those of you that don't know, we've been doing some stats and analytics ever since season one back in the day. You can check our YouTube library for that. You can also check our Instagram. We recently posted a graphic on the Knicks assist per game to wins ratio. Now, currently, the Knicks are 30th in the league in assists per game at 19.8. The Golden State Warriors, in contrast, are uh, first in the league at 27.6 assists per game. Not much of a surprise there. But, you know, as Knicks fans, we're always talking about how we want the Knicks to move the ball more, that our assist numbers are low, the ball stick with one player. That was the common theme in the mellow days, that the ISO offense is killing us. Right. So what we wanted to do is actually see if there's any – connection between assists per game to wins and to do that we went back all the way to 1990 and graphed all the Knicks wins per season to assist per game for that season to see if there was any kind of correlation right um and we obviously did find that there's an incredible correlation I mean it doesn't take you know a rocket scientist to understand that more assists equals more points but there are a few other things that assists really mean for a team I think one of the biggest things that assists demonstrate are is trust the fact that if you have trustworthy players if you trust the players around you you move the ball um more points will just naturally come out of it but if there seems to be a lack of trust or lack of chemistry players might be more hesitant they might think that they, they need to be the white horse the what man on the white horse where they kind of take control of the game they have their iso game so like you've mentioned before we've had a lot of problems with iso basketball right. but um assist games like you said it's just it's highly highly correlated in assists and how how well the team functions as a, as a unit yeah totally agree yeah now if you guys have a look we plotted the trend line of both wins and assists per game we use the polynomial trend line if anyone's interested in knowing more about that let me know in the comments maybe we'll make a separate video but you do see there are some outliers the 54 win game season that lockout season so the correlation does get a little messy there, but there's definitely a direct correlation between assists. Those early 90s teams had a lot of assists and a lot of wins. So definitely in our best interest to moving forward to move that ball more 
and I think it's going to translate to more wins, at least historically speaking. Right, absolutely. And the main go-to guy we got to look after is Emmanuel Moutier, the best passer, best passer on the New York Knicks squad. Uh, he's been killing it recently, assisting Kevin Knox, assisting Mitch and his canter, the, the whole nine. So um, if we can get more players to kind of have that energy feed off into them and they're able to move the ball and share it, I just think that, one, it'll keep the defense more honest because if the defense is stagnant and they know what you're going to do and they can just stand and watch around, it's a lot easier for them. You're letting them rest. But if you move the ball around, it gives more opportunities for transition. It gives more opportunities for better like shot selection and less chucking of shots. And it just overall, it breeds a better energy on the team as a collective. Absolutely. So there you have it, folks. Uh, that's been a Mad Good Stat Analytics segment. If you guys want us to do more of these or you have any particular stats you're interested in, let us know in the comments. We'll definitely check those out and follow Mad Good Nick Show. Thank you for watching. Thanks, guys.